wear masks. I hope the president will clearly and unambiguously urge all Americans to take the vaccine once it's available. I took it to instill public confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Harris took it, took hers today for the same reason. Good evening, I am your host, Jack Remington of Jack Remington Political Analyst. Today's video is a compilation of just two blog posts from a great blog called No Smoke Blown by the great Bill Robertson. He is an author. He wrote the great book, Better Lives for Our Grandchildren, A Plane Crash Survivor's Perspective on Politics and Life. I met him when I first joined Twitter back in either late 2014 or early 2015. I'm not really sure the exact time. I've kept up with him ever since, in a way, at least online. And he gave me permission to post a couple of blog posts from a few years ago, and I did that. And he thanked me, and I'm going to have to do it again because he says things better than what I can. First article I'm going to quote and reference from is from the 18th of December, 2020. And uh, the article is, is titled, The Biden Future for the USA. We replace a successful businessman with an Alzheimer's patient who has accomplished nothing in politics. He is replacing a crack team Trump put together through trial and error with a team of political bootlickers with zero experience and an emphasis on diversity. To a person, their competence matches with his. He is beholden to China since they were very likely having the documentation that he was up to his eyeballs in Hunter Biden's China investments where Hunter leveraged access to Joe for cash. Launder the money and didn't pay taxes, Joe could be indicted. This was sold to the voters by the corrupt media, including the social media variety. What could possibly go wrong? This metaphor a reality? And I'm going to hit this link here. I'm going to put it on the screen here, and you'll get linked to Twitter. And I'm going to play this GIF for you right now. Would you see his arms are almost as big as mine? So now I'm going to go to another no smoke blown. We're going to skip ahead to December 31st, 2020. The title is called 2020 will be 13 months. 2020 started with so much promise. The economy was roaring along and there was peace in the world. The Democrat Party was into the fourth year of doing nothing but trying to get rid of President Trump, who was building the wall they never approved. The media was working 24 seven to help the Democrats with that singular mission. Then came the virus. The Chinese shipped us a little bug, COVID-19 or, or coronavirus. Everything stopped. The Democrats and the media were handed their greatest gift ever. Trump could be blamed for everything COVID and there was no defense. The gift included an evil, lying, liberal elf named Dr. Anthony Fauci. Like Jill Biden, not a real doctor, but an immunologist. Also, like anyone named Biden, a person not to be trusted. Trump was botching his COVID updates and Fauci stabbed him in the back weekly and the media used both to do serious damage to his approval ratings. Then on May 25th, the cops in Minneapolis killed George Floyd. And I'm going to have a little commentary after I read the uh, complete article. We'll discuss it a little bit here. This gave the media yet another opportunity to set off civil unrest across the country and they and the Democrats use this for political gain. Black Lives Matter, defund the police, Antifa in Portland, Seattle's autonomous zone, and all that followed that. Biden was struggling to get the Democratic nomination for president when James Clyburn endorsed him. That sealed the black vote and got him a groundswell of energy to carry him to win. He hid in his basement, did not do press conferences, drew no supporters to rallies, and appeared to be phoning it in. There were to be three debates, and one was canceled when Trump got the virus. The bias of the moderators was blatant. Biden won a contested election. Trump had warned for months that the mail-in ballots would allow for rampant cheating. He was correct. January 6, 2021 will be the critical date to determine the winner of the election. We go into January of 2021 not knowing who is the president of the United States. It seems inconceivable that this country would elect an Alzheimer's patient president. Yesterday, in a speech, Biden referred to Harris as the president-elect. Trump to say, wear masks. I hope the president will clearly and unambiguously urge all Americans to take the vaccine once it's available. I took it to instill public confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Harris took it, took hers today for the same reason. We go into January 2021 lockdown in Democrat-run states and cities. In Oregon, Governor Kate Brown finds Lindsey Graham, really her name, $14,000 for remaining open for business, and sends the health and human services to Lindsey's home to harass her children without Lindsey being home. This takes socialism into communism. A new strain of the virus breaks out in Colorado. I can only say that we all want 2020 to be gone, but if you, it refuses to leave, I will wish you a happy new year when it does. Now we're going to discuss a couple of things. I'm going to agree with him about the, the evil, lying, liberal elf, 
named Dr. Anthony Fauci. And I already did a video about him. We've got two more videos about him coming up, forthcoming. He's digging his heels in. Let me just give you some foreshadowing, some, a clue what's gonna, what the video is going to be one of saying. Uh, Fauci is not going to relent. He's been given his marching orders by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and who knows, uh, Nancy Pelosi and who knows who else. So he's going to say whatever they want him to do. And I said in the other video, they're going to drag this out to 2022 to the midterms. This is another desperation move on the Democrats. They're going to say, well, we had to do this. until We're sorry it took so long. Uh, we know some red states like Florida, Texas, now Mississippi, and, uh, uh, Wyoming uh, has opened up in South Dakota and never closed down. So that's four red states that are leading the way. But they're going to, and they attacked Christy Noam, the governor of South Dakota, when she said, I'm letting the people make up their own minds. So when you look on their meetings in, their, in Pierre, South Dakota, it's, really called, it's not Pierre, it's Pierre, South Dakota. I've been there a couple of times, and that's how they pronounce their capital of their state. About 40% of the people you can see in the meetings and the, the conferences and the uh, governor legislatures, they're wearing masks because it's voluntary. Social distancing is voluntary, and that's based on if you have a problem with anyone coming within six feet of you, you, you ask them, you say, please, can you respect my social distancing? And there has not been, not been one incident not one. I've been looking at it almost every day. Not one incident of any kind of a confrontation in the state of South Dakota. Why? Because the governor has faith in her people. And that's another video for another day. And yes, uh, uh, Fauci stabbed Donald Trump in the back weekly or what? Well, it's every other week, really. And the media used both to do serious damage to his approval ratings. Okay. That was done intentionally, but the, the public doesn't want to see that. And if you go on Quora, if you go on Yahoo Finance, you go on this, the different, you go on any, any website, any web portal, you will see the majority of people are blaming Donald Trump, bashing Donald Trump, orange man bad, Biden is great, Biden is reasonable, the, the adults are in charge of the room again. Really? Because they never accepted someone like Donald Trump, and that's coming up in a different video for a different day. It'll we'll, we'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, and Biden was struggling to get the Democratic nomination for president when James Clyburn endorsed him. That, okay, that was the fourth debate. Bernie Sanders was hanging on to a lead, he, he, and Pete Buttigieg was in second place. I mean, Joe Biden was, was in fourth place. And Amy Klobuchar just picked up a few delegates in the third race. And Kamala Harris had zero delegates. And she had to drop out for the California primary. I mean, she got rejected by her own party after her first four debates. She had to drop out. Most of us remember that. And James Clyburn, he, when he endorsed him, he's the, the Democrat minority whip. And I believe he's from South Carolina. Uh, that sealed the black vote and got him a groundswell of energy to carry him to, to the win. And that's true. The bias of moderators was blatant. I mean, this Chris Wallace, he says, Mike Wallace's son? Believe me, whenever you hear me say in my other videos, the offspring is not like the old man or the old woman. It, I'm telling you, it just seems that way to me that seven out of ten times that's true. I mean, Chris Wallace is nothing like his father. Now, his father wasn't perfect, but his father was objective journalist. Okay, that's why Mike Wallace was a household name with 60 Minutes of the heyday. Mike Wallace made that show, like it or not. Okay, Biden won the contested election. Okay, Trump warned for months that the mail-in ballots would allow for ramp rampant cheating. So did Jimmy Carter, a Democrat retired president. Jimmy Carter was part of that commission that said we should never allow mail-in balloting, never allow absentee voting. And I've got to sneak this in here while I'm thinking about it. My father, my family, was just a bunch of liberal, maniacal Democrats. They were JFK Democrats. Okay, that's when they were working for the union parties, the working class people, the middle class and lower middle class and your marginalized people. That's what the old JFK Democrats stood for. And that was, that was a good thing. That was a good thing. And JFK was our last great Democratic president. Give Jimmy Carter, who I voted against, voted against Jimmy Carter twice. I voted for Gerald Ford in 1976, and I voted for Ronald Reagan in 1980. And I don't regret those votes. But Jimmy Carter is a, is a very decent man. I need to say this, and, and, and then I'll get back on topic. I don't, I don't mean to veer too much here. I got my dog here. Hi, Jim and I. Come on up and say hi. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, but Jimmy Carter was a decent man. He was just overmatched for the job. He brought his cronies, that Zabrinsky from Georgia. He brought the, Billy Carter was hanging around you know, with his Billy beer and getting drunk on the lawn and urinating in the bushes. You know, Jimmy Carter was overmatched and it showed. I mean, he really badly mishandled the Iran hostage crisis. The same thing happened to Donald Trump in a way. So Jimmy Carter depended on his people to give him sound advice. They did not give him sound advice with so that Operation Desert Storm over they had in there where the seven, uh, seven GIs the Marines died in the helicopter crashes when they, no one, no one thought about the sandstorm coming up. Well, that was Intel's problem. And I was working for the Department of Defense when that happened. I was a young man and I'll never forget that. And I felt, in a, in a way, I felt bad for Jimmy Carter then and I feel bad for Jimmy Carter now. He's the oldest living president we ever had. He's 96, I believe. And he still has a good sound mind. Uh, I just think that, uh, that JFK was the last great, decent president 
on the Democrat Party side and, and with honorable mention to Jimmy Carter. I, I will refrain from opinion about why, what I feel about Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Mr. Robertson talks about an organ by Governor Kate Brown. I remember when Kate Brown, I read an article about a year ago when Kate Brown was up and coming in, in Oregon politics. She did the same lockdown. She did the same protests on the floor, sleep overnight in the chambers. You know, she did all that. When the Republicans refused to show up a couple years ago, she had, went out to have the, the Oregon State Police arrest them. Okay, they didn't make any arrests because the Republicans hid. You want to tell me that about this Kate Brown? Uh, that's why she got the nickname Brown Shirt Brown, but she's got it mastered. She worked with her other friends in California, New York State, uh, New Mexico now with that, uh, that crazy uh, governor that they have there, crashed through the wall with kids in the classroom, we had bashing Trump, uh, Washington State, and Michigan too. They control the voting. They have packets of people, now, and I'm going to have videos I'm going to prove all this. They have packets of people. They have vans of full of people. These, they're mostly Latino women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They cart everybody around, get them to the polls, get them to vote. And they take them to the next one. They vote again. They're, they're already illegal aliens. They already broke the law. And, and people keep saying, this is, what, this is what they keep pushing at me. Well, they wouldn't risk deportation. by why, why? Who's going to deport them? They're protected. They're in sanctuary states. They're in sanctuary cities. They hate Donald Trump. You think they won't vote, vote against Donald Trump? Because Donald Trump wants accountability. He doesn't want people coming in here illegally. He wants legal aliens, legal citizens. That's, and we all want that. But you can't tell the Latino people that. Like in my video, watch the video about Joe Biden the other week, about his uh, press conference, his rally in Greenville, South Carolina. And, and you know what? This is the one of the few times you see me agree with Joe Biden on anything. He was correct when he said, if you commit murder, if you commit a felony, I have to deport you. No more deportations. No more deportations. I mean, you can see, watch the video for yourself. That's, that's not me. That's C-SPAN. Get mad at C-SPAN. But enough, enough of Kate Brown. I need to, uh, I'm need. i spending too much time on this one here. And, and she really, she, uh, Kate Brown really did find that it's a restaurant, Lindsey Graham, 14000 for remaining open for business, then sends the HHS to, to her home to harass her children without Lindsey being home. That really happened. I looked it up. I researched it. It's true. When Mr. Robertson writes, this takes socialism to communism. Well, that's what, that's what Andropov used to do when he took over from uh, in Russia in the 1980s when... Uh, uh, before Gorbachev took into power. He had kidney ailments and he wasn't alive very long, but, but he struck down hard on dissidents. I mean, he, he brutalized parts of Russia and you can read that for yourself. I don't, I don't feel like making a separate video about him. And then the new strain of the virus breaks out in Colorado. Yeah, two male victims, they were both under 40, uh, but one of them was what they call a shut-in. He couldn't get out the door of his house. He couldn't get out. They had no patio door. That's, they call them people shut-ins, okay? And they just stay home. And he lived by himself. He had to people leave the food at the doorstep and he would pay them with his EBT card, wherever he paid them, and he never contacted anybody. He got that strain of COVID-19 and passed. He had had no physical contact for eight months. Eight months. Now, you tell me about this. I personally think that a lot of it's the flu, and that's why the flu count is not even at 30 this year. 30 for his past flu season. Not even the count of 30, and Dr. Andrew Gorka gets credit for that bit of information. So I think that the uh, doctors and the Fauci and everybody else, they're, they're, they're padding the COVID-19 deaths and COVID-19 illnesses with the flu. Who, who are we to know? We're not doctors. See, they are. See, they have it in their back pocket. They have the credibility and we do not. But we're not stupid. We have common sense. We have life experience. We can add two plus two. We're not mathematicians, are we? That's going to have to close it for the uh, No Smoke Blown. I want to thank Mr. Robertson for let, allowing me to do this. It's always a great day to be an American. I got plenty of videos coming up. I'm going to make the time to get this channel going. The, the things the things are, are so far gone that we, we are going to have to make a stand. We're going to have to fight back. And it's going to have to be by force because they're not going to relent power. They are not going to give up their power. The Democrats in this HR1, why vote after that? One federal bureau cover all 50 states and Puerto Rico and the St. Virgin Islands. And I got this basketball player, Ray Allen, running his mouth again. Very excellent basketball player. Uh, I commend what he's trying to do, but he is so misguided. And he's hung up on this equality thing. And his co-hosts bringing up this Trayvon Martin again. Really? They're clinging to that? Okay. So I now have to do a video about Trayvon Martin. We're going to revisit that. We're going to revisit the, the Michael Brown case. And there was a, a little episode with the father now. He's mad at Black Lives Matter because they raised over $100 million. They gave him a check for $500 to use his son to start the Black Lives Movement back in 2014. A lot of information and a lot of stuff to cover. And there's only so much time. And I got to do my eBay channel. I got to do my Law and Order and Crime channel. I got to do my movie channel. I got to do my animals channel. I got 10 total channels. Some of them have just one or two videos. The Jack Remington Financial Independent channel is going to be the main channel. And these political videos are going to be pushed over on Rumble because YouTube's already given me the, the signs. They're already, you know, contacting me saying, you know, 
You're advertiser unfriendly. I'm watching YouTube demonetize Larry Elder on the Epoch Times show, I'm on the NDT show, and there's a third one that they just demonetize. Uh, Sticks Hammer 666. And he's the one that I watch him almost every night in Salty Cracker. I've got some some tremendous, superior, excellent YouTubers that I follow. Far, far better channels than this one. They're teaching me little by little. I'm learning from them, and they're very, very good. And they're getting demonetized because they speak their truth. Okay, and YouTube does not want you to talk politics. They don't want you to discuss the election. They don't want you to discuss the so-called insurrection. But I'll be talking more about the insurrection in my next video about the Joe Biden week four and week five. So always great to be American. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless America. Thank you.